Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. We're back at you with a review episode. Finally, we missed <laughs> Go you. Go figure. Right? Uh, we took the, the very rare one week episode break last week, so it's nice to be back, you know, talking about games in depth, you know? Mm-hmm. And the one we're talking about today is a good one. We're talking about Red Matter 2. This was one of the reasons why we didn't have too much to do last week. Yeah, I don't know. This game if, occupied a lot of my time. I don't know if we're like slow or like just have trouble with complex puzzles or anything like that, but I struggled on this one. Well, on some some puzzles, some puzzles. The the thing with it, just like the first one, they give you a scanner so you can scan things and then read. If it's scannable, I scan it. So I'm sure <laughs> total mean- amount of time you could probably <laughs> shave an hour, maybe two off of, you know, if you just went into it normal, I'll say. But I figure, yeah, I, I know it's puzzle-based, so I, I know there's going to be clues everywhere. and I'm Well, not just clues. You you know, anybody who played Red Matter 1, you know there's lore in those little things, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you could miss a lot of the story of this game, not reading the notes, yeah, not reading the wall stuff. So For something to be, I mean, the first one was done so well that I really wanted to soak up every second of this second one. And I feel like they actually upped the humor in the uh, yeah. the descriptions of <laughs> items. There's some really, yeah. really funny Especially on like books and stuff. Or clocks and yep. things like that. You know, pretty much anything you scan, you might get a little joke. Yeah, unexpected. Even It might even be puzzle related. And they still throw some humor into it. Yep. So. so this is a new one though. Because this just came out August 18th. So Yep, August 18th, 2022. It's made by Vertical Robot. Same exact people. Awesome who, name. Yeah, they have one of the, the best development studio names, if you ask me. And I mean... Cool little character. Again, their logo. Yeah, which you can actually... You know, no spoilers on where you're going to find it or anything, but there's a, there's some cool hidden items there's that are... There's some Easter eggs in, in the game. Including that Vertical Robot little robot. Vertical Robot, yeah. Hey, dude, I even found a VR headset. Yeah. It's some cool stuff, yeah. so... For people like us who but are scanning everything. Scan everything because you'll know what to do with everything, too. Well, I'm also the guy, if there's three lockers, and it's clear that there's nothing related in any of them, I'm still opening up all three lockers. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, all the cabinets. Sometimes all the, there's a note in there. Sometimes there's a little Easter egg, you know? Yeah. So, again, made by Vertical Robot. Uh, it's twenty nine ninety nine on the official MetaQuest store. Which, real quick, I actually thought, with all the hype coming into it pre-release... In my head, I thought it was going to be a a thirty nine ninety nine, or maybe even possibly a forty nine. Well, thirty nine ninety nine is the highest I think we've seen yeah. on the store. Uh, but I I really thought they were going to go for a higher. So twenty nine ninety nine was like, wow, that's a good friggin' deal. Yeah, especially if you're somebody who likes the, these kind of puzzle games and uh-huh. story based <laughs> games. You know, uh, look, if you don't like puzzle games, are you going to have the best experience with Red Matter one or two? No, probably not. You probably would have learned your lesson from the first one. But if you like puzzle games, I mean, this is cream of the crop. So again, twenty nine ninety nine on the official Quest store, three hundred fifty four total ratings and 223 written reviews with a 4.8 overall at the time that we're talking about this because yeah, there's always that one percent one which is there but for the most part it's it's pretty damn positive yeah and i mean again it's this it's a direct sequel to red matter one mm-hmm. we had kind of talked about this a little bit in our early impressions but they fill you in on what happened in red matter one yeah, if you never played red matter one and you just want to jump on board with this one you, you certainly can yeah, I do think the best experience comes yeah, from... but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Yeah. It's no biggie. But if you're lore junkies like me and you... Then you I, have to. I think that you're going to get the best experience Because we could have easily skipped over one and just reviewed two, but we I both th- were like, no way, man. That's just not... I know we can, but we we can't do that. I also think it, playing one so in-depthly gave... And so recently, you know, with two just coming out, gave me a bigger appreciation for two. I think it would be harder to play two... And then go to one, because we'll get to this in our review soon, but like all of my complaints from Red Matter 1, if there, if I had any criticism, mm-hmm. it was addressed and improved in this one. Oh, yeah. They, they blew me away with. So I think it would be hard to go from Red Matter 2 to 1, even As though Red Matter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Even though Red Matter 1 is so good. Definitely. I just think that, that, you know, get Red Matter 1 out of the way and then go to 2. But if you really don't have the patience for that stuff, they do fill you in story-wise. Yeah. You're not in the dark, which was a concern you know, I mean, because not everybody, I, I mean, I know millions of people have played Red Matter 1. There's no doubt about it. But 
there will be some people who are, are like, no, I'm just going to, I'll get the second one. Cause certainly all the hype, it's mm-hmm. kind of drilled into your head. It's, and then I'll go to one later if I like it or whatever. Yeah. If it was good, but you will be stepping graphically down a little if you do that. Cause there's some bars that have been raised with what vertical robot has done. It's actually like kind of over almost too good in some areas. Yeah. They're, they're graphic engineers, you know, whoever worked on the, the design aspect, the visuals of this game hats off and you know very underrated because everybody including us is going crazy about the graphics and i know you're going to agree about this because you're big on this stuff but the sound work the the soundtrack in the game oh yeah i mean they deserve quality they deserve just as much credit as the graphics yeah that's an area i think we as reviewers and even consumers sometimes overlook is you know and i know we even have a category aesthetics and it usually I, falls more into the graphics but and, i do include the sound in that because it that, yeah, that immerses this, the whoever i just want to personally do better with really recognizing those people who work on those music tracks because that's not that's that's a that's a big percentage of the experience oh yeah just it, like a movie you know it can get your blood pressure up it can get you to relax it can let it, you know something bad's gonna happen yeah so I, I mean really and i agree a million percent with you on that well and the thing is and i think it's the reason why so many people don't notice it or don't recognize it is because a really well-made soundtrack that matches the game or the movie you're not Mm going to notice because it's so part of the immersion together yeah Yeah. it's it's hard to explain but yeah a really well done one you have to pay attention for uh but they did they did really good with that they killed it they there was times that i was playing this alone and i was like for no reason (laughs) Just because I know how empty the like I'm not spooked, but you know, damn, I would be preferring to play on party chat right now. Yeah, and it's what's crazy is it's not a scary, it's not a scary game. But I think it's the emptiness. It is. It's the aloneness, and let's be honest, you can go into areas that are pitch black, and all you have is that little flashlight and flare gun. Mm-hmm. And I had gone into a. I won't even say where I went into so people aren't looking for that specific (laughs) thing. I went into a very dark area and I shut my flashlight off and I actually felt the alone. Yeah. That, oh my God, if this was really, I'd be shit scared right now. And look, there's, I can't think of a single jump scare, anything like that. No horror. I expected some at some points. Yeah. There's not really that, but it's something about the emptiness of space, which they do a great job of visually capturing. There's some moments that you can stare out a window or like you're traveling in a pod, which is some freaking cool stuff traveling in a a pod from location to location. Mm -hmm. Because I won't say where exactly you go, but you're not on the same spot the whole time. No, you do some travel. And looking out into space they do a great job like capturing its beautifulness it's it's like the majestic ass but yes when you're landing on somewhere and things are getting dark yeah it has that that empty alone feeling yeah i i really give them credit and their um the graphic improvements they made for lighting and reflection oh like that's the one area if i were to actually say like give me something like if you had to nitpick it to death i would say there's sometimes where the reflections it's just too good or it's too much. It's like, wow, it's actually too much reflection. Yeah. It looks too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, also there was sometimes later in the game th- towards the end that I felt like maybe it wasn't as tight as the beginning in the middle. And if it was that level that it was at the end, the whole way through, it wouldn't be an issue. But when the reflections are so good at certain points, it can make it like uh weird when it's not as good in another area if that makes sense yeah no i i really can't criticize any of their graphics no they they really should teach a master class to new developers yeah, of no, like they, here's how you you know we always preach if you want to bring us on as independent contractors and we'll tighten we'll show you how to do uh you know how to work they're the for the, the best developers i i've seen for this type of games graphics imagine if they just freely opened up the the coding for other developers well, I don't, I don't know if it's I don't know enough about how this stuff works. I, I I don't know if it's exactly coding as much as just general knowledge of how to to work specific, you know, I scenes. Know. And I don't know, but that'd be a really good question to ask one of the developers. Yeah, these guys are definitely because I the know dream we list we know of. about the packs that people can use that anyone can purchase. So you can anybody can theoretically mm-hmm. create a game, but 
there's so much skill and i feel know, like they're making their own <laughs> you know what i think about a game like this too it's not just the skill you can feel the love and the passion that they put into it you know it's well, not just a skill developer there there's they want the a extra development mile. team they're not exactly like they don't pat themselves on the back it seems like they really lay low yeah it seems like they keep pretty low profile low yeah. key like who are they <laughs> at the end of the day who are they yeah but hats off they they nailed it like we said sound score environment the story is great the gameplay i mean they give you a freaking jetpack yeah. which is, i love the jetpack which pack. is their kind of answer to the teleport movement from the the first one mm -hmm. which I know we've got some people in our Discord who actually had motion issues. Yeah, some motion sickness. Even with all the settings, with blinders and all that. All the comfort settings and all that. And it seemed like, I think they were saying the jetpack was, was what was, did it. Was, or what was setting it over. Yeah. But, and, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a couple written reviews about motion sickness. You know, thank goodness I was able... I didn't personally experience that. No. But I think it is good good to mention that there is a, a percentage of people that... Yeah, and, the, and this the game's was, giving them some motion sickness. She's also like a really good gamer, so it's it just it. I felt really sad because it's such it's, a good story. I think she was like halfway through the game, if not more, mm -hmm. before it like kicked on, and it just wasn't worth. Which hey, not for nothing. There was a game that we loved. I think it was what was it, Twilight Zone? Mm -hmm. And you loved it, yeah. But one of the levels in there Fucked gave you me. gave you some motion sickness. It did, and we're seasoned. Yeah, we, you know the only thing that's I think all right. Here's what I kind of discovered with some of the motion sickness. I think in the right conditions of like your body temperature is a little warm because I've done this. I've I've gone from like Beat Saber to Ragnarok, which is a crazy combination to jump back to, and then I go to do like a standstill game, and my heart rate's up a little, so I'm hot, and then I'm playing a game that creates a little anxiety or stress. And maybe you're a little dehydrated. I think that triple combo can like trigger that VR nausea feeling. Yeah, there's been a lot of studies on on what causes it, and like there's been a lot of different, you know, possible answers pr proposed. But mm -hmm. it's always weird how it's like that certain game Could, will do it. One time I was in, on antibiotics, and we went to go play Pop One, a game that we play every freaking game session. That's like the first game we're playing all the time. And, you know, I, I was on antibiotics, and I went to go play, and I was like, dude, I can't. You made it 30 seconds. And I was like... You made it off the platform, and yeah, then you were like, I, I, I can't, just can't, I I can't, can't just, do it. It was hitting me so hard. So it's like... Yeah, that's why I'm looking there's, more into the environmental factors more than necessarily just the game. Well, it's... The game's got a 4.8. I mean, so clearly it's not hitting everybody. No. But there is a percentage of people that, it, you know, for whatever reason, it, it's happening, but... You know, besides the jetpack, that I feel really sad because the story. Oh man, story gave me goosebumps when it ended. The story is very well done, yep. and they they keep you legit. Like the hair on my arms was standing yeah. up. <laughs> I was, was like, good. okay, it was really good. That that is more than I could have ever mm -hmm. ever asked for an experience. And besides the jetpack, you know, they added added some combat, which mm -hmm. I won't give spoilers on the way it goes. But like, if you're like thirty minutes an hour into the game and you're not doing combat yet. Don't think that it was undersold. Like you, you'll get some combat. Yeah. Well, it just doesn't just happen that, the first thirty minutes or anything like that. It's not like there's you start... some usefulness to the whole big picture. So yeah, uh, but there's guns, and then obviously, hey, look, this is a story-based puzzle game. Guns, gun. There's gun. <laughs> there's gun. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have gun. You have gun, but you're getting shot at too so i mean there's well, guns <laughs> there's combat there's combat we'll say yeah. That, yeah, that's how they that's how they word it that there's combat yep there definitely is so you got jetpack you you know there is some combat in it obviously there's a lot of puzzles mm -hmm. and i found them much much more difficult than the first one yeah we you know same thing that happened in the first one we got tripped up on completely different puzzles and all of them that you get tripped up on that answer is so obvious you're just missing something, mm -hmm. but it's happened to me a lot. What's interesting about this one is that there's kind of like two different style puzzles. I would say there's like the traditional puzzles of the first one where it's like logic puzzles, look, analyze, figure it out. But they do have some skill based ones where it's like less of a figure it out more. It's obvious what to do. Mm -hmm. It's just <laughs> movement things or certain maneuvers or timing. 
puzzles more than logic. So they have kind of two different kinds in this one. No, they added a really good variety of puzzles, and they're all somewhat complicated. And I think they deliberately, like, they'll throw in, like, a hard one and then kind of toss you an easy one because you get save points, which makes you always feel good. And then um, they'll throw in, like, a beastly one at you. But let's be real. Some of the ones that I got stuck on. I got stuck on two. Some of the ones that I got stuck on took you not even a minute. Nope. Some of the ones that you got stuck on. But I've... when I say stuck on two, yeah. I mean stuck for 24 hours. I didn't solve the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And then I moved forward like a banshee. And then 24 hours waiting for... There was legit two that really, really like tied me down. But... And I do want to make it clear because one of the things people have been asking is like, well, what's the overall time frame for gameplay? Like length? Yeah. Like, are you going to go through this in an hour, three hours? I think I easily put 10 hours in it with not any, you know, and that's not counting my struggles. So if you added days, Mm -hmm. you could go, well, it was 10 hours of gameplay and two days of breaking my brain trying to figure out what the hell I'm, I'm not doing right. Yeah, I'd say a game like this is so hard to gauge lengthen because it's all so individual. How, mm-hmm. how much time are you going to spend scanning? How good but are you at solving? even as a minimum, how fast do you think you could really run through it? I'd say a minimum six hours. Yeah. Minimum. And that's just like if you kind of know. Because I thought if of, you're just I thought really good at puzzles. It, and I'm like, huh, I wonder how fast I can go through it replaying it Yeah. just with that purpose in mind. And I just don't want to do it because we got other shit on our plate but yeah. I don't know how really long it would take me probably yeah. definitely five six hours I would say that's that's probably a good minimum and then if you're like us and you scan everything probably upwards of 10 11 yeah, I'd say I easily got 10 but like here's the thing it's 10 of like really high quality graphics and good story it's awesome content awesome content I mean like dude did they, they exceed they, your because you were you were involved in the pre-hype and seeing videos and pictures did it exceed your expectation yes because i'll be honest with you the first trailer that they put out i was like that's not on the quest too that's just not that's what everybody had said because after we get to play it i could finally read mm -hmm. some other past stuff people posted that's pc there was no way and then they were kind of posting some more stuff that seemed to imply this is quest two and i was like man if this is true Let's see. And then I got in there, and there was just some of the scenes, man. Yeah, absolutely passed it. Surpassed. No, um, they, they're going to... I am I think it's right now game of the year. Yeah. Unless man. something major happens. Man, so we're going to do our 2022 Rough mm-hmm. Talk VR Awards, just like we did the, the first ever one, 2021. It's not annual if you don't do it every year, so we got the 2022 coming up. We'll start to talk about categories and nominees and stuff like that. But I... I don't like to, that's why a game like this is why I I feel weird when like do it in like May or June or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so, even now there's still so many games coming out before the end of 2022. Well, that's the thing. You can't. How do you do, you know? And I mean, personally, I think it's a little dirty when a game comes out in December and then can clean up the game of the year, which has happened in the history of games before. And it might happen this year for all we know. But it makes sense for holiday releases. I Mm -hmm. get that. But for including into an end of the year, it it sucks because somebody could just wait until that last. It could happen week. this year. Yeah. Like, yeah, as much as you're saying you think this is game of the year now, it's like we'll I'm see. trying to think of what's coming that could really give it a run for it, its money and graphics and performance. Mm-hmm. And it's like Ghostbusters is coming, but I actually person I think it's more modeled after the original game of Ghostbusters, which is going to be cool and fun, but. Uh, you know it's going to come down to like performance and graphics to give this one a run for its money yeah let's see there's a lot of lot of variables but uh this is a beast so besides the the addition of the guns and the jet or combat and the jet pack and then you know different kind of puzzle types they're hard you know they also have like this hacking mechanism now that's that's cool of it where you take out this like they use a star wars sound sometimes the exact sound of us in the star wars movie what sound I can't duplicate it. It's the mechanical sound. That's probably just a generic fucking wire sound. And I I didn't hear it every time either. That's what else was cool. I I can't think of which one you're talking about at all. Yep. You plug it in one time and it instantly makes the sound in your hacking device of the kind of like a droid. Mm -hmm. That kind of, I mean. No, I would have to go look out for it because I didn't didn't catch that. But uh, it's cool though. You take it out of your left kind of 
your hand. claw hand tool thing. So you take it out and you plug it right in. And then sometimes you can just scan things very rarely or not scan, but kind of like hack into them mm-hmm. without doing a mini game. But nine times out of 10, I'd say you have to do this cool little mini game that I didn't understand how to do at first. Like I did not understand at all. I didn't realize that there was like, they show you where to move yeah. the thing. You know, there's Gives a dot. Little, there's little a, there's a, a, this is the dot that you need to move it on. Like so there's a shaking cl- your hand all around, but basically like you, you plug it in and it's like, all right, press X to initiate the hacking. So poof, you know, the thing pops. So probably that's when it makes the noise that you were talking about. Um, and then from there, there's like this little node. It's like this little glowing ball. You got to move it to the sweet spot that you know could be wherever in the circle there's all these other little dots and then you know as you get closer there's vibrations and as i learned later the correct spot actual dot to move it to when you're feeling vibrations you'll be able to see which dot that they want the trail yeah it's well not only that there's like the correct spot to move it to yeah is is like five times as bold as the other dots yeah they give you like might be eight little dots and mm -hmm. they'll be faint and because that's where you're attached mm-hmm. to, and then you can see the main one flashing yep. like crazy. Yep. And you're like, well, yeah, so then you just move it right there, and then it's set. So it's just a- the overwhelmingness when it first opens. And I you're had like, no idea. I, I've never I've never hacked into anything <laughs> yes. with this kind of method in my life. This what is, is going on here? This is a first time for me. But what's crazy is by the I'm end... I'm a hacking virgin. <laughs> by the end, it's like when you plug in and you hack into something... And they make it a little more complicated. Yeah, there's two the of end, them, but yeah, I wasn't going to say that. But um, you you're more of a natural about it. Oh, it took me took it's me less like time you, for the you're end. not upset about it. But in the beginning, when you first start playing it, it's like you you almost don't look forward to these hacking things because you're like, I'm not understanding. I would hear it beep, and then I would kind of shake my hand <laughs> around in that general area, and it worked once, but then the next time it didn't work. You're like, what exactly was, do I do? I think yeah. I even said in a party chat one time, I was like, oh, I understand this now. It took me, I, I agree. I went from like not looking forward to them to psh, this is, I could probably do six of them right. in the time that it took me to do one in the beginning. You're not upset when you come into one. It's yeah. just second nature yeah. at that point. If I plugged in that thing and there were six nodes, so I would have hacking in the future is like that, they're really psh, creating some I hope it's not because they're too hackers. easy. Right. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can hack into there, and that that could advance the the story or the plot or the puzzle in a hundred different ways. You know, there's a lot of different things can happen once you hack in. Um, so they added hacking. I mean, there's voice acting in this, which there was in the first one, but I'll say even the voice acting took a step up in this one. Yeah, I it's, think there's carryover voices from the first one. Yeah, but they did a really, I don't know, it just sounded tight. There's a lot of games that I play that, especially in VR, that the voice acting is probably the one thing that sticks out as... Well, it sucks with some sometimes with the games, because you can almost tell that the the voice actor didn't read them in story. Like, they were just given the sentences mm-hmm. to say, because we've seen a few games where, like, the emotion given... Doesn't sounds, match. The... Doesn't really match the dialogue that was before it. Yeah. And so it's like, like why is that guy not excited, or why is he excited when he? So yeah, they they. I dude, wanna, they just I from wanna... A to Z, they crushed it in my opinion. Brick, what game was it? I want to say it's Oblivion. Uh, there's a fun little like, like you know, knowledge Easter egg. I'm pretty sure it was Oblivion that the voice actors were given the lines in alphabetical order. So sometimes you'll be playing Oblivion and it'll be totally out of tone <laughs> because the voice actors were kind of like guessing. Yeah. And I, I feel like I've heard that in other games too. So it's better. That's why like in-studio mm-hmm. VO work is well, better. Well, that's a, uh, something I kind of want to give the comment here. And there's been a lot of voice acting games I played that like, not voice acting games, but games with voice acting that there's like one character character who you can tell they didn't record in the same setting as everybody else mm-hmm. and like the quality's different or like the bat there's background noise there's fuzz there something one, there was one where I, I think one of the the vo's sounded like they were on a cell phone yeah and all the other ones were but it wasn't intentional it wasn't no. like part of and you know there's sometimes that there's some voice effects in this one with like because it's like radio transmission going on so maybe mm-hmm. it's it's crackly or something like that in that case you know they nailed the effects part but for the most part that the voice acting is really tight you know, something I had referenced on the early impressions episode was like, there's a couple times where that a, a face will pop up, like a kind of almost like an an AI yeah. projection face, and the, you know, it doesn't really line up with the mouth moving. But again, I I even said it on the last one. There's no game I've ever really seen to be able to line up. There is no robot I've ever seen built 
with current AI. Yeah, that doesn't have that uncanny that valley. That, like it looks real as shit until it talks, and yeah. then you can kind of see that the. So I'm not surprised that they didn't get a facial model with insanely realistic m- muscles on the face when no, it doesn't exist. You know, so I'm not I'm not really gonna flag them there. Um, but no, the, I actually I loved the the hologram face. I thought it was pretty tight. Yeah, you'll see a couple of them, and uh, there's a. <laughs> I mean, the settings, again, it's a direct continuation of the first one, so it's a dystopian Cold War setting. I mean, it's... It has it, that very old Soviet... Yeah, that... Soviet feel. That U.S. versus Russia, you know, U.S. versus Soviet Cold War feel to red. it. A lot of red, a you lot of blue. You will play this game. <laughs> Soviet Union, you will be good. No, there's a lot of good, like, humor and references to... Oh, yeah, I was doing full-blown conversations back sometimes <laughs> oh man and like we said before you said it gave you goosebumps the story yeah yeah man oh, dude it's so good the wrap-up was we were making guesses i'm not gonna say what our guesses are because no. our guesses weren't right no seed planting but i was actually amazed that yours wasn't right because i can see it was getting more i can right see as i went that you're because you had made an early prediction like Kind of a third into it, and I'm like, not even a third. I was maybe ten minutes in. Halfway in, I was like, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. I thought I was getting more and more right, and then, until the very end. And then, even like thirty minutes left in the game, I thought I was right. No, see, I I gave up at one point. I won't say why. It was a conversation yeah. that I was like, it can't be. I mean, it, it could be. We yeah. could be. Yeah. But, no. Yeah, I'd say the last sometime around that last thirty minutes is when I was like, okay, I'm I'm conceding I'm wrong. So I was real curious how they were going to wrap this up. Mm-hmm. I didn't want. I wanted. I wanted to be surprised, and I wasn't just surprised. It's like I want to talk about that ending so freaking bad. Yeah, and oh, man, I I won't ever talk about it unless it's one of the people who worked on it talking about it, and that's what sucks. And there were characters. Hey, yeah, when we're if we're interviewing developers and they they bring up spoilers or something like that, that's on them. But yeah. when we're reviewing it, you know, yeah, I can't. That, they that, did such a good job with the the, the writing. And there were well, because there were characters in the first one that I remember being sad about their conclusion of their story. Mm -hmm. And it continues those characters' story. That's like, it's a big part of the plot is these two characters and they're kind of like their love and everything like that. (laughs) And, you know, a former friend. And it's like, oh, it's we're continuing. We're going, this is the plot that we're continuing. Oh, yeah, I was so excited. And, oh, man, this this was like peak VR Quest 2 experience for me. Yeah, this is the... This is the experience that you you've been want waiting to put for? on somebody's. Oh, if you have, you know, for graphics, if you put on this and real VR fishing, you've probably much hooked anybody. Mm-hmm. Go well. That's what photorealism would kind of look like. Here's where we're at now, and here's somebody or a company putting the absolute, you know, utilizing raising the, the bar, raising yeah. the bar. That's I the mean, only way to put it. And if given nothing but the Quest Two for another year. It's only going to get better. Something better is going to come out that's going to make Red Matter 2 not look as tight. Yes. I mean, hey, we should bring it up. Something that they referenced Vertical Robot as part of the reason that they were able to uh, to optimize this so great for the Quest 2 is it's not Quest 1 mm-hmm. supported. They didn't have to. You know, they're kind There's of... no way. So, I Couldn't mean, like... load the loading screen then. For Quest most one. games, they still do have that requirement that there needs to be Quest 1 support. It's select games that Meta seem to allow that support to not be there. The first was like, you know, Resident Evil oh, dude, 4. Come and, on, man. But this is... This is they shouldn't I, have to, to dumb this one down. Yeah, for... no, I think we're hitting that point where it just makes sense. You know, it's like, look at the experiences that the Quest 2 is capable of. I think it's a yeah. hindrance at this point to... Uh, you wouldn't want to play this any, any less than what they're offering it to you. Yeah. So it would suck to know that they had to to do that so no this is a the finest example right now of of what the quest can do yeah and i know we're going to be repeating ourselves a little bit from the early impressions episode but in case anybody didn't listen to that what was it like a 15 minute little quick one the other week uh our only my only complaint about the first one was like the control scheme and the movement Mm -hmm. the movement was very awkward and this one it's way better you know in the first one they you pull a trick you could pull a trigger and like walk forward, yeah. It would just turn glide the direction. You forward. Yeah, and the, the the movement and or there was like kind of like a zoom to movement where you like you know select teleport. where to go and it would kind of like teleport you. Yeah, it was very very An weird. auto jetpack that you weren't in control of. <laughs> yeah, it was very very weird. So this one's not like that at all. You can just move with your analog stick. Again, they give you a jetpack, mm-hmm. which is needed at some points, and just yeah. 
badass in general. There was times I would just travel with jetpack because why not? I found, and it's not a spoiler, but I found things unrelated to anything you need in the game. Just because of the jetpack. Because of the jetpack and the ability to utilize objects mm-hmm. and was able to grab things that clearly, get to clearly were, no, were clearly findable for a reason, but mm-hmm. have nothing to do with any of the mm-hmm. game. Just a little bonus thing. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, and there's, oh man, so the jetpack is just freaking cool. So the movement's better. A, it's, you know, just the analog stick and the, the jetpack. And the jetpack, when you're going up, you know, so you, you, the, the height you want or whatever, which it, it runs out of steam, but you can kind of like glide with it. Just but, hold the button. So it, <laughs> yeah. And it makes it, you know, it makes a nice little sound. So it, it, it adds to the immersion of it, I'd say. And then also they give you the, the left and right you know handed mode that mm-hmm. was something big i had talked about in the first one the review. that's because you were having drift issues oh, i was having drift issues not because I... you were taking sympathy on left-handed people <laughs> no but in the first one it, they made you switch your tools with the analog stick and i was having trouble selecting which tool to go to yeah, i even because... had a little difficulty mm-hmm. and you weren't even having drift but i was and for me who was having drift that was a problem so if i was saying it like hey if they had left and right mode and i could switch which anal you know i wouldn't mind moving with a little drift but then if my good controller i could access the tools that would be awesome so not only do they give you that left and right handed controller mode now they also give you know when you switch the tools you don't do it with the analog stick anymore you do it with the face buttons on the controller yep so way better a they give you now that left and right handed support and it's just way better controls in terms of movement and switching tools i said on uh, the early impression that it's probably going to be no secret if someone wanted to gamble what my score is going to be based after my first first review of the first one and what issues I had that don't exist in the second. So it's I, I agree. Yeah. Anything that was an issue seems to have been resolved, yeah. and then they gave you added bonus. Everything that was an issue is resolved, and everything that was great about the first one, graphics, music, puzzles, story, is it's even better. better. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, is there anything that we didn't talk about that we should before we get into our final thoughts? No, and they do, do give you, I mean, I guess from a setting standpoint, you did mention the right and left hand. They also they do give, give you some comfort. some comfort, quality of life issues if you are prone to, to, motion sickness. to motion sickness. It does sound like for people who the motion sickness was hitting hard, didn't seem like the comfort settings were helping at all. No, but they do exist. Yeah. To whatever, and and again, I feel really bad because I don't. Because it's think, such a good experience. I don't think by design it's really that type of experience, but you know, I suppose I can see how it could happen. Yeah, and again, it's like there's sometimes even when seasoned people get hit with motion sickness, like when it was happening with you yeah. in Twilight Zone. It, it's. But I think some of that was environmental. Yeah, but it, it's it's hard to pin down the rhyme or reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like why is this experience doing it? It's so complicated, you know? Yeah. But if you can experience it and you're not really doing anything, then it, it probably isn't as much the the VR. You know, if you're, like, standing in a room or yeah, nothing. So I get if, like, a floor is moving one direction, the walls are each moving a different direction, and the ceiling's moving a mm-hmm. direction, and your point of view is freaking weird. Yeah, that could probably get somebody nauseous even not in VR. Yeah, like a self-inducing... And then there's some instance, like when I played Ultra Wings 2, the first time I took off an Ultra Wings, because I was getting used to the controls, I didn't really know, you know, how sensitive it was going to be. Like, oh shit, this is like real life. When I took off an Ultra Wings the first time, my stomach dropped. But that wasn't VR sickness. No. That was like, this game is that just... That was flying. That's how it feels to fly. Yep. You know, I even got that a little bit in Thief Simulator. The first, you know, when I was first driving, I wasn't driving good. And I was like freaking spinning out and going crazy. I felt a little woozy, but... If I was in the car with somebody and they were behaving like that, I'd probably get woozy. No, I got you. So, you know, there is also... I feel sad when anybody gets... Especially when it's a great experience. Yeah, when the story is so good. It's not so great, then, you know, hey, you're you're not missing out. Take that as a... So we can get... You know, I I can't really think of anything else to cover without giving spoilers. No. Uh, we're probably going to just start to repeat ourselves at this point about how good the environment and the SS are and the story. Well, I mean, there was a lot of hype, man. Everyone... I think everyone who read anything about it or heard anything about it was like, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. Their their ability to, to use reflection and lighting and everything's so much better. It's going to be, you know, come on. I mean, Chris, Chris mentioned it was 
freaking yeah. amazing. Yeah, when we interviewed Chris Prout, the the director of the content so, ecosystem of Meta, he's like, he's stay tuned like, for hey, Red Matter too. He says, hey, it's it's graphically amazing. You have to see it. Then it's like, oh my god. So it it lived up to what all the hype was, and that to me is the most important thing. I think you can make a strong argument that it even passed the hype. In my opinion, it did. Yeah, but again, if you're not a puzzle fan, probably not for you. No, but you I know, would stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll get into our our final thoughts and our review. But you know, before that, like always, let's take the moment. We'll take a message from our sponsors. You know, some of the people who help keep the show afloat, and mm-hmm. then we'll go from there. Damn, Stratus, have you been working out, or is that a new shirt? Nah, it's just a new shirt. What is it? Is that, <laughs> is, that, is that your true classic tee right there? It is. Oh, my goodness. Check this. At the Rough Talk VR podcast, we just landed a brand new podcast sponsor. One that I'm really happy about. Well, let's be real. It, it's the case with you. It's the case with me, too. Anybody who knows us, we're pretty weird about, you know, shirt material. Yeah, just, it's got to, I don't like certain things on my skin. Oh, I'll drive my girlfriend crazy. I'll put on a shirt. I'll sit Take there for right a second. Off. I'll be like, nope, need a different yep, one. Too Ma- thick. Yep. Mater- too heavy. Uh, material, fabric, weight, it's all essential for wearing a shirt. Yep. You know, you're you're speaking the truth. <laughs> and you know what? These shirts came in. True classic. Mm-hmm. They're shirts. They're lightweight. They high- fit. They form fit really nice. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like not everybody's got the... The got jackpot. the guns, but <laughs> you don't need it with these type of shirts. You know, real, real form fit. You know, if you're, we'll say, a bigger size gentleman, dad either body. either long or body. just bigger. You know, it really doesn't make that hanging feature that you see no. some shirts put on. You know, it kind of just hangs right over. The most important thing for me was going to be how it how it felt on my skin more than anything. Mm-hmm. Anything outside of that's an added bonus. So they've hit all the. The boxes that one would need check marked for a, a good quality t-shirt yeah so whether you're like us and you're you know very particular about the type of shirt you're you're putting on or you're just having trouble finding a good fit t-shirt check out Co- true classic we can use code word rough talk vr all one word and save 25 percent off your order and they even do free shipping with orders above a hundred dollars yeah that's in today's times so that's worth its weight in gold and you might say hundred dollars in shirts go yeah, you know shop what? you know what I've... they got packs they do other things besides shirts they do workout stuff they i mean you say you know yeah you can 100... bundle your own little little wardrobe accessories there they got something for everybody but if if they could send out like a little four inch swath of their shirts to just millions of people mm-hmm. i bet you millions of oh, people just sample the fabric yeah, the, because the minute once before i even put mine on i just wanted to feel it mm-hmm. and i knew before i was even going to put it on i'm like this is a good t-shirt yeah and it sounds crazy but there's they're definite i'm living proof i got a whole drawer in my house full of shirts that i will not wear each for a specific reason yeah no i yeah, true classic tees is not going to fall into that pile no nope, they home run it they really did so, and i'm happy that they did because otherwise we certainly wouldn't be able to talk about it yep and i'm glad that now we can share some savings with our you our know listeners. our podcast listeners so, absolutely again that's 25 percent off with code rough talk vr and you know purchases over 100 free shipping baby nice what's up everyone crotch discomfort hurting your game fear no more The kings of crotch comfort, Manscaped, have spent two years designing the most comfortable box of briefs out there. Sleek, soft, comfortable, and flexible, the brand new Boxers 2.0 from Manscaped take your balls to the royal ball throne. The global leaders in below-the-waist grooming have the lawnmower 4.0 for the trimming, so you can wear those Boxer 2.0s for the chilling. They even trademarked the jewel pouch, so you know it's serious. I think it's time you invest in your family jewels. So let your bulge breathe and get 20% off plus free shipping by using the code RoughTalkVR at Manscaped.com. Let's say you're on a date and your partner catches that Manscaped on the waistband of your underwear. It's almost guaranteed to raise some eyebrows and act like a billboard on the highway to Pleasure Town. Beyond ball cleaning, Manscaped is focused on ball comforting with the new Boxers 2.0. Boost confidence everywhere you are knowing you're wearing the absolute best pack for your sack. These boxers are a game changer, and features include the Jewel Pouch, a pouch designed to cradle your boys in their own special space, lined with perforated performance fabric to keep them well ventilated. Is this heaven on earth? Nope, more like heaven on girth. 
The Micro Modal fabric is buttery soft and breathable, keeping your cucumber cool. Walk, run, strut, these moisture wicking boxers breathe without breaking a sweat. The tagless waistband hugs your body without digging in and it lays flat against your skin to reduce chafing. Be proud of your underwear and wear the Manscaped waistband with a badge of honor. Your balls deserve it. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code RoughTalkVR at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with our code RoughTalkVR at Manscaped.com. Up your crotch game because once the Boxers 2.0 touch your sack, you'll never go back. All right, back to the show. So, do you want to start with yours this this week? Because yours, you know, you seem to be implying that yours is pretty obvious. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you don't, if you want to take the lead, you, you can could this bet week. on it. I mean, all all I've said for the past two weeks is, oh my god, oh, oh my god. god, dude, again oh that first that first time you go into that, I want to cheat so bad. I wish I could cheat so bad. I can't cheat. I want to cheat, dude. The first time you go into that shuttle and you move from location to location, or when you know, ugh. Just dude, just when the, the game loads up, and I, I'll actually throw a quick thing in there. When you load in the game for the first time, it's going to optimize, and it says optimizing for the first no, time. No, it says one-time but optimization. One-time so. optimization. but Unless you update. <laughs> every time there's an update, it's going to re-optimize. So if you sign in and you're like, oh, my God, why is it re-optimizing again? They lied. No, it's because it seems like every update, it re-optimizes. One-time per update optimization. <laughs> Yeah, one time per update, not one time. But I just want people to know in case they turn it on and they're like, why is this happening? You might be prone to shut it off yep. and then try it again, but it's still going to need to happen. All righty. Gameplay. Oh, I, oh, actually, I'll, I'll sorry. I'll, I'll interrupt you. I know most of our listeners have already heard this like ad nauseum, mm-hmm. but our review categories are a little bit different for a game like this. Yeah. We're doing, you know, five categories broken one to 20. Gameplay, aesthetics, functionality, difficulty, and value. So those are the five categories. Difficulty because it's a puzzle-based game. Yes. Normally, difficulty doesn't exist as a category. We have replayability there, but it's not fair to rate a game like this on replayability that's story-based and puzzle-based. And even with replayability, the end score for this would be pretty good because I do want to play it again. Yeah. That's actually a good point. But yeah. just in general, it whenever, be great. It's, whenever it's a story it a game 20. or a puzzle game, it's yep. difficult instead of replayability. So now you can take the lead. Sorry to interrupt there. Right. I don't even need my glasses for this one. Okay. So gameplay, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved the load-in screen standing there watching the slow-ass moving bar that said one-time optimization. And I just was you know, looking at just the picture that you see in the background if you're watching on video, something similar to that. And was just in awe. So they, they, I knew that the actual gameplay was going to be better than a photo I'm looking at or a, a picture. And it was. Every issue, complaint, anything from the first one doesn't exist, in my opinion. The aesthetics, it's pretty much all we've talked about. It's all we can talk about. Does the movement work and does it look, does it look and sound good? Yeah, we can't speak high enough about the graphics as well as the sound score they used. It really comes together well. Even some of the little just sound effects, it it fits. Nothing's like spiking in your ear. Functionality? Oh, so I give them a 20 on gameplay, a 20 on aesthetics. It's just kind of a gimmick. Everyone knows what I'm doing. Functionality, I'm going to give them a 20. Nothing didn't work for me. I didn't have any glitches. I didn't fall through anything. I don't know. It just everything really, and there were some areas I kind of went off the beaten path to try to put it through some, let me see what's here. And I was amazed that there was actually shit there, even up to and dropping a flare to the bottom of a floor that you didn't really ever need to see the bottom of. But I was amazed that the structures, because it was bouncing off the structures into this black pit. I'm like, they're there. They actually made structures that you can't physically see blowing me away but functionality a 20 difficulty i give it a 20 i had 48 hours of personal life struggles with two of the puzzles that's good enough for me some of the other puzzles were just hard enough to keep me occupied but there was a shit ton of my battery's dead i i'm I'm out i'm plugging back in i would go through i think one day three or four times i ripped through my headset so yeah they're difficult for me, 
if you're one of those people that can look at logic puzzles and those scramble words and, you know, see code, then no, it's probably going to be way too easy for you, but I'd still get it just for the, the visuals and the aesthetics. But for me, a 20 and then value for the money, I thought it was personally going to be $10 more. It's not, it's twenty nine ninety nine. I think it's a great value for the money. If you can play it and not spoil it for the other people in your house, with your excitement when you solve something, which sometimes happens. I talk out loud when I'm playing, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got the... Or I'll say the number to a, a puzzle out loud. Um, I think everyone would enjoy it. I don't see any age restriction. There's nothing over-the-top profane or whatever. So a 20, I give them a 100. I, I a legit 100. I can't make up anything bad about it. I'm happy I got it. I'm happy I got to enjoy like literally every inch of the yeah the, think, the, the game that i could i think that was an obvious score you know before it ever even got read i think you were you were pretty heavily implying that yeah this one's yeah i mean when we did the early impression something majorly would have to go terribly wrong for my mindset to have changed mm-hmm. between them and actually finishing the game I, I and think this... it didn't it's a it's like almost a six gig install so you know you're getting something good yeah and you're not getting something you're going to be done with in an hour. In my opinion. And, like, I think this might be your first or your second hundred. I know we we both gave her a million a hundred. I don't know about any other ones besides that. Off the top of my head. No. I'd be lying, but I would say no. I feel like this sticks out as the first, like, game. Game style. Because for millions, like, more of a experience than a game. Yeah. A hobby. This, is, this is the first game yeah, this to is get a hundred. Yeah. I think. It could, I mean, but again, I mean, everything came to, from the visuals to the sound to the, just, I mean, even that jetpack when you, yeah. <laughs> no, this, you believe it. Yeah. You know, I can't, the story, it would, I held my arm up and I was watching the hair on my arm stand up. No, they wrap it real good. You know? So, I mean, what can you say? What no, am I? They raised the bar. Ah, the graphics weren't they good. They raised the say, bar. And, they raised the bar without yeah. a doubt. So hats off to them, but holy crap, I feel bad for other <laughs> other new games that are, you know, these were made a year to two years ago and they're coming out and then you have these guys who are just, I agree, they should just scrub making games and just go Teach tour. people. Yeah. This is how you can do it and this is how you can get the maximum. Here's how you optimize the quest. I think they did something amazing. They're very if talented. they don't win game of the year, I'm going to be shocked. I'm, I'm just Let's saying see. I want to see something major has to happen. I'm excited to start rolling out info on the, the Rough Talk VR 2022, you know, game of the year awards. Great but, experience. All right, so I'll go into it. Let's see how, how obvious or unobvious mine is. I think mine's going to be pretty obvious as well. So gameplay, I'm pretty sure I gave Red Matter 1 a 20 on gameplay, and this is even better. So just to stay consistent, I mean, I got to give them a 20. They give you the jetpack, way better controls, way better movement. They give you combat, which I guess I could have lived without. You know, I wasn't like, if there was no combat in this, I think it would have been equally as good of an experience. But if you're somebody who just likes to go pew, 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 you know, they, fuck, they got you for this one. So, you know, gameplay, I'm going to give 20. You mentioned uh, the flares. So, like, they give you a flashlight, which they gave you in the first one. But the first one, I didn't use the flashlight at all because it was never really needed. And this one, you need to use the flashlight. And, yeah, we didn't talk about it really in depth but while you have the flashlight open you can pew you shoot flares that's pretty freaking cool and they actually come in handy they're useful sometimes so gameplay 20 aesthetics sound visual you know that invite that feeling i mean like dude this is probably the best graphics on the quest arguably the best sound score that immersion that they give you you know it's not even a horror game and there's moments that you feel it you know so i mean Aesthetics, I got to give them a 20. That's a no-brainer. I'm pretty sure I gave Red Matter 1 a, a 20 on aesthetics. This is even better aesthetics, so 20 on, on aesthetics. Functionality, I didn't really personally have any glitches. Um, you know, there was no, like, grabbing issues for me. There weren't times where, like, I, I was trying to grab something with my claw hands, my lobster hand, like, doo, 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 and it wasn't picking up. But uh, I can't even think of anything that that could go wrong you know the only thing that i could na- nail them on functionality would be like if i was one of the people suffering from motion sickness i might go hey you know 
there's a point deduction there, but I didn't suffer from motion sickness. That's so like this is your review. That's the thing. I, I have to play. I have to review these on my experience with them. You know, I can't say, hey, some people might find these puzzles easy, so that means they're easy puzzles. If they if they were a struggle for me, um, so functionality, I gotta give them a twenty as well. Difficulty. This is just me. I think I'm going to mirror pretty much exactly what you said. Maybe you're one of those puzzle whizzes, and this is going to be crazy to hear. But for me, I got to give them a 20. Uh, there were some puzzle and different puzzles than you. The puzzles I got stuck on, you really maybe at the most got stuck on one of them for like 20 minutes, I think. Whereas the puzzles you got stuck on didn't seem to trip me up as much either. But like, you know, everybody's brain works differently. So the way it would go for me is like, I would get into a groove and I would blow through like three or four puzzles. Like what I felt was like maybe an hour's worth of content in like 20 minutes, I'd be on a roll and then I'd hit a wall. I would hit a puzzle, wouldn't be able to figure it out. And then I'm going to probably going to be stuck there for exactly kind of what you were saying. The rest of your headset charge, you're going to just, just going to be stuck there. So that was kind of rinse and repeat my gameplay cycle. I'd, I'd get in a good groove. You know, I think you had implied that maybe they do throw you some give me puzzles that's kind of how it felt. So I'd get like, boom, I'm making progress, making progress, making progress. You go into a room and you almost know you're, you're going to be stuck. So difficulty, I'm going to give them a 20, uh, in value for 29 99. Yeah. I mean, come on. The, the amount of effort put into this game in, in terms of sound quality, visual quality, voice work, story writing, the creating the puzzles and it all functioned so good. Which, you know, we, we always talk about in these puzzle games, you can't have glitches in puzzle games. Because if somebody's doing something right and it's not working, that's an issue. So, uh, value, I got to give them a 20 as well. So, 20 on gameplay, 20 on aesthetics, 20 on functionality, 20 on difficulty, and 20 on value. I'm giving them 100 as well. It's, how? How do you not? It, but here's the thing, I playing. I'm reviewing this as I, I experienced it. I enjoy puzzle games. I enjoy story. I actually enjoy the the kind of Cold War story that they have going on a lot. That was a lot of fun. So, I mean, I have nothing to flag them on. I mean, I'm interested to see what they do with the next for Vertical Robot. Do they try spinoffs? Do they try a whole new series? What What's going to happen? Well... I don't want to say at this I'd, point I'd, they I could can't, I they can't, could I don't do wanna... anything and I'd probably buy it. Yeah, because I'm expecting. I mean, you know, I, I sit here and say, oh, they've raised the bar for graphics and and all this stuff, but they've more done that on for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like this is their standard. This is their bar. Doesn't mean everyone can do it or will be able to do it, but they they have to know that anything they put out is going to have high. I just wish they weren't so. Um, I guess just reclusive. Low key, I can't. I can't blame you them. Know, they make they make good stuff, and they don't. I mean, I'm sure in house they celebrate, but they don't seem to really. I mean, dude, they could go anywhere, and they'd be like developer celebrities at this point. Uh, well, for the VR world, for the VR world, yes. Yeah. If they VR. went to like a convention or like, you'll see a lot of these gaming studios no, go to conventions, just VR. demo their stuff. Yeah, imagine if these guys were at GamesCon or something like that, and they demoed. Uh, 30 minute demo of this game to people they were probably there just walking around nobody knew right nobody knew. <laughs> no they're very Talked to the they're guy for a half an hour didn't even know definitely low-key developers but you know 200 out of us uh, i mean if you like puzzle games if you like these type of story adventure puzzle games this is a must own in my opinion red matter one and red matter two great yeah. games no my my prediction thus far today is this i i played the game of the year yeah damn so good <laughs> so uh for anybody who actually watches on YouTube as well, you know, you'll notice that we have, you know, new Rough Talk VR t-shirts. Yeah, we got Rough sure. Talk VR mug, the new one with the new logo, new logo on the t-shirt. So love the new logo. I don't know if people know this too much, but we have a merch shop. Mm -hmm. It's it's on Etsy. You know, you can find the link to it in our show notes. You can find the link on our website, www.roughtalkvr.com. We have a merch shop. So we do sell these mugs and these t-shirts and all that fun stuff too. And then, like I always like to say, you know, go join our Discord our subreddit are ever growing communities that you know the discord's been it's been a party recently it's been popping so you know we got a lot of people you know join there who are maybe silent too if you're in and you don't post often come say hi to sometime you know and if you listen to the podcast you haven't joined yet go join the ever-growing party uh usually i 
say a little bit about our buy me a coffee link which hey if you want to go donate go ahead right there it's right in the show notes but we are planning on rolling out a little bit more perk based you know patreon server soon so stay tuned for info about that anything else you want to add before we wrap this baby up no oh, my crooked ass glasses on my head oh, <laughs> the rough life i know you're, you're preaching to the choir here nope i'm just stoked we got to play it in its entirety and it lived up to this hype that yeah. was talked about for months i mean like you leading would... up to the, months it's like anytime somebody caught a little mm-hmm. two seconds of it they would just go off the wall with we you wanted to see it to believe it we wanted to have the review out last weekend or last week couldn't but... physically finish yeah, we didn't finish it. And a game like this is wrong, in my opinion, to review without fully beating it. So, like, you know, got to beat it first. Oh, no, dude, I agree. I was so confident we could have it ready by next, by last weekend, too. Yep. And then even to get it ready for this week, it was like... We just spend way too much time... Scanning stuff, yes. If I did a, if I did a quick playthrough, it would be... But I want to fully experience it. If I it. saw a mirror on the wall, don't think I didn't stand in front of it and see how they did with the background reflection. The yeah. only thing missing is physically you seeing your character in the reflection. Mm-hmm. But if you move around the room to the left or right, you'll see that that's actually the room behind you. Oh, they do such a good job. So they're they're close to getting that whole... Because, again, the, just the reflection of not seeing like a vampire, mm-hmm. I guess, at that point. Can't yeah, it's weird how you don't see yourself. But, nope. but it, I know that's just another level of the complexity of not just adding the reflection of what's behind you to look like a reflection but then actually adding you to move with it but damn man you can get lost in the scenery in this game yeah i caught myself at times spending you know 10 minutes just looking around scanning things doing nothing knowing i have a puzzle over my head but like (laughs) ah dude it's really good And that's what's cool it's like yes you can die you know but there's not that stress per se no. Of like a, a first person shooter or like jump scare horror, which we still got to do a mm-hmm. scary ass horror. We're looking yeah. for the scariest. Seems, seems like often requested people want to hear us do a horror game. Yeah, but I want I want to know what's the scariest on the Quest 2 right now without having to, you know, go through PC. If you have an opinion on that, go pop in our Discord server and our Reddit server. Let us know what terrible horror game that you want to make me you know have to wear a diaper while i play and in, in review you know I'm whatever down. you think the scariest is let us know i want to know so uh, i want to experience it it's gonna scare the shit out of me. oh yeah but no this was this was great hands down nope. give them all the credit in the world great job vertical robot you know again red matter too if you're a puzzle fan must own but other than that you know stay tuned for friday and have a great week take care we got something special coming friday <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.